what I'm in love with too. So this is, it's been really fun. All right, we're live now. Thank you everyone for watching here. Welcome to another episode of Keto Chat. I am your host, Carol Freeman. I am a board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist. And I am in the epicenter here in the Seattle, Washington area. And we're all social distancing here uh, and bringing you something to offset all the doom and gloom and the anxiety and overwhelm that's out there. We're bringing you positivity, you guys. Um, tonight's episode is going to be about, gosh, how do we take this time to actually look inside and use it for a time of self-improvement, honing our skills, improving ourselves, rather than just giving up and land on that couch over there for like my cats do all day long. So um, I coach people. I'm going to start out and tell you who I am. And then I'm going to tell you about our amazing guests we have. One of the nice things about what's going on in the world right now is that everybody's unbooked. And so I have all the best talent in the entire world at my fingertips. <laughs> well, then we have Derek here too. So, you know, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I have all the great talent. So I'm really excited to bring the guests or tell you who we've got here tonight. Um, but let me just really quickly tell you about myself, uh, Carol Freeman. And I primarily work with women, a few men once in a while, but um I specialize in helping people feel, figure out this lifelong struggle they've had with their weight, be able to follow a ketogenic diet as a lifelong sustainable solution where they can lose the weight, keep it off, and just move their obsession with weight and food into the back of their mind. So uh, that is me. Let me just really briefly, I'm going to tell you our guests, and then I'm going to bring each of them up. They're going to spend about 10 to 15 minutes sharing their area of expertise with you and lead you through some exercises to help you uh, find your zone of uh, skill and self-improvement and uh, all that stuff. So um, I'm going to introduce you all in the order that we're going to go. I know I didn't even tell you guys that. So um, <clears throat> we have Tiana Kelly. And the way I learned how to pronounce her name correctly is it rhymes with Diana. So Tiana Kelly, welcome. Thank you. Uh, let me just... Uh, so I'm actually going to read your full bio right before I introduce you. So uh, it'll be a, in suspense. Uh, and then we have Kelly Track. So we have Tiana Kelly, Kelly Track. And Derek is out of order. So I don't know. We should have had Track Wolf or something. But uh, <laughs> welcome, Kelly. I'm always curious. <laughs> and then Derek will wrap up with you. Uh, Derek Wolf is in the Seattle area as well. Thank you all for taking the time out of your busy day days and lives to be here with us. Um, so actually, uh, and those of you that are watching, if you have any questions for our experts, please uh, type them in the comments box here. I'm going to have to bring up a couple of our um, chats in our groups because we're actually live on my page and well in a group tonight. So it's very complicated. Hopefully you all can see us and chat with us here. Um, all right. So up first, let me, my, my let's see, my privilege to bring to the stage. Uh, here I am pretending I'm in comedy again. Um, <clears throat> oh, up first, we have Tiana Kelly, a coach who helps women break the cycle of trauma in their families by putting themselves higher on their own lists. And she's developed a unique assessment system called the 12 Hearts Prism. I can't wait to learn about this. And I got to tell you, Tiana, um, so many of my clients are in that box of putting everyone else first in their lives and they put themselves last. And so I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for being here and welcome. Thank you for having me, uh, considering I met you on Friday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Through social distancing, Zoom call, yes. it was very fun. Um, and so, yes, I developed this uh, unique assessment to help women because I used to be a doula, a birth and postpartum doula. Mm. And uh, what I realized is that so many of us who are moms put ourselves way down on the priority list and that extends past the first year of life when we have babies that that just continues on and on and on. So uh, I wanted to use my skills. Uh, I also got a master's degree while I was a doula. And so I've taken the skills that I gained from my doula life and uh, getting my master's in strategic communication to become um, more, more well-rounded to help moms beyond the first year. And I've also used my own resiliency in overcoming uh, trauma as a child and as an adult. So I just, I've mashed everything together to create this new thing. 
Oh, I love it. I love um, it. So I'm going to just, I hope everyone can see this. This is, these are the 12 heart prisms. This originated from, I developed my own logo, which is this heart. And then I turned each heart prism into its own <clears throat> thing <laughs> for a lack of better word. Uh, well, it's for those of you that are women right now that can totally resonate with Tiana's, uh, you know, putting everyone else first before you just give us a yes in the, the comments here, because <clears throat> I know this is a common one. So give me an amen. Ladies. Yeah, there you go. that's even better. <laughs> um, so the 12 heart prisms, I know I kind of flashed that up quickly and it was hard to read. So I'll read through them. Um, we have your village, self-awareness your willingness to succeed and your willingness to fail, resiliency, goals and dreams, renewal, accountability, honesty, your history, the infrastructure of your life, what does that look like, and your passion. So the goal, I take women through this either as our first session in coaching, or I also offer this as a class, a group class, and I offer those pretty much monthly. And we just spend time going through each one on a one to 10 scale. And, um, and you get to color in, everybody gets their own blank heart and you get to color it in. And it's really fascinating because everybody gets to see what's going really well in their life and where they also need to improve. And the goal is never to have a completely full heart because it's just not realistic. Mm. And what I've come to realize, is it okay if I say a bad word? Um, <clears throat> well, which one? <laughs> okay, Glad, yeah. I won't, I won't say it. Right. What I've discovered is we're that... Doing, so we're PG-13, so you're allowed one F word per episode. Oh, no, it's uh, the SH word. Okay, yes, 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 okay. that's fine. <laughs> okay. balance you know we're all told about balance work-life balance mm. balance is bullshit ladies okay can i get okay. an amen yes yes there we go because <laughs> we are taught and told by society that we're supposed to have this perfect home life be a perfect mom and put the kids first and do all these things and then we're also supposed to have a career and then we're made to feel like crap when we don't achieve that. So don't forget to take time for self care. Society is gaslighting us. Yeah. So I'm here to help you figure out where you can put yourself first. And, and so renewal, you notice that my prism is not self care. It's renewal because you have to constantly be filling your own cup because you can't, serve anyone else from an empty cup. You can't fill anybody else up. So renewal is some, you know, things like getting enough sleep, eating well, um, doing things that you love. Like for me, I love to tap dance. So fun things like that. Um, but just taking really good care of yourself. Do you have a morning routine? Do you have a nighttime routine? Like it's not all bubble baths and pedicures. So let's, and especially right now when we can't go out and do those things that we love and we have to find what we love at home, mm. right? And how do we fill our cups when we're feeling isolated? Or maybe we're feeling a little trapped. Anybody feeling trapped right now in their house? Almost, yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, that is what, I do. And so I would love to answer any questions or, um, you know, just, hear what anybody else has to say about their, um, I'm just going to give a shout doing. out to John. He is our, uh, original viewer. He, I think he's been here almost every night of this broadcast so far, and this is the fifth night in a row. <clears throat> so John, thank you so much. I could give you some kind of a, I don't know, a star or a crown or something like that for a supporter. A top fan. Yeah, top fan. Thank you, John, for being here. 
Um, and so he's he's doing his dumbbell curls. One of our episodes on Saturday was about how to stay active at this time. So he's being active and still watching the show. So thank you so much, nice. John. Um, <clears throat> um, so for those viewers, please share uh, any questions you've got for Tiana in the comments. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to challenge our other guests here to uh, ask a question of Tiana. Yeah. I would love to answer any questions. Another um, popular thing that we're dealing with right now, as far as the heart prisms go, are, is our village. And mm. how do we connect with our village and feel that support from one another when, when we are isolated? Because I'm a big believer that we are not meant to do this thing called life on our own. We need to have other people supporting us. So how do we do that when, um, when we have to keep our distance from one another? So if you are struggling with a village right now and how to stay connected, uh, I would really encourage you to jump on some Zoom or FaceTime or something. These video conference tools that we have are so great. And I've been on Zoom more in the last week than I have maybe in all of very uh, combined. I think it's been really awesome. Anybody else using Zoom or FaceTime or any of those other platforms that to get through this? Yeah, I think we did a uh, yesterday. We did my girlfriend's dad. We did like a. 12 way FaceTime thing and it was it was really odd it was really interesting yeah because then eventually yeah. the dogs came in and then they took over the whole thing so that's really about <laughs> what I saw somebody one of my friends yesterday or over the weekend did a zoom engagement party for her brother oh yeah so you know life looks different but life goes on and we're getting creative and figuring out how to still connect in this time. And I think for me, at least I'm connecting with more people during this time than I normally would. Like, like I said, Carol and I met on Friday in a group zoom through a mutual friend. It was a lunch, it was a lunch meeting on zoom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got six people watching right now. So I'm challenging there. We need some questions from those of you that are watching. So, um, what questions do you have for Tiana right now in this time of how do, how do we take care of ourselves? How do we, how do we deal with this like pseudo thing we're told or it's life balance? Uh, what, so here, I, here's a question for those of you watching, what are you struggling with right now with overwhelm? What are all the things that you're trying to, uh, balance and juggle in your life? Um, that you need some more guidance on how do you how do you manage all this? How do you how do you juggle everything you're to so share with us? Dump out your overwhelm. What is it that you're dealing with? Um, Kelly, do you have a question for Tiana? Yeah. Oh, first and foremost, I love what you shared about renewal versus self care. I thought that was a beautiful and very eloquent way of describing it because I I feel okay. like I've never really resonated with the word self care, but I love the concept of renewal. I would, I would ask, my question for you would be around village, because I feel like yeah. village, especially in the world of today, everything being so digital and with Instagram, it's like we're more connected than ever, but you know, quite often I sometimes feel more lonely than ever. Sure. Um, so do you have any tips on you know, improving that village aspect of your life when you feel like you're kind of getting this like false community from you know, online and social media versus sort of at the end of the day, you kind of feel like your cup's not really filled up because you're never really like hanging out with people in person. Do you have any tips on balancing that in sort of today's like modern techie world? Yes. And my best tip is to call your girlfriends <laughs> because I, <clears throat> I was in a really dark place a few years ago and, um, and I'm an extrovert. So I need that social connection. Um, so I, have to make a point to like make appointments with my friends and call them just like I would call them in high school. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah. It's so true. You know, like, especially like even like making an appointment, that's such a good 
idea because you know is in high school it was like impromptu call or yeah. just like oh hey but i feel like everybody now it's like i feel like it's not okay to just do an impromptu call like i'm always messaging my friends like oh hey are you free at like seven o'clock tonight and like get it in the calendar and it's like yeah. in high school we just pick up the phone and call your best friend but today was so much going on especially you know going back to what you said of like you know life work balance and just all struggling with like more things than ever you gotta like really get that time in the calendar so yeah i love that yeah. tip yeah. I, and that's been really key for me, but, and I will, I will tell people like schedule a half an hour to an hour because that's the time it takes for both of you to get the time you need to like debrief and mm -hmm. share what's going on in your life and get that voice connection because this is not the same as hearing people. So yeah. that's my big, my big tip. Derek, did you have a question? Yeah, um, I guess, uh, I mean, one thing you brought up earlier about uh, just keeping like a schedule and stuff in the morning and the afternoon and stuff and, and uh, someone from do that does work from home multiple days a week, like that is something I have an issue with uh, just mm -hmm. keeping up. Do you have any tips on, you know, how to motivate yourself to, to just continue doing that? And yeah, so for me, it's, uh, it's kind of easy because I have eight and a half year old twins. So yeah. <laughs> keeping, keeping on a schedule it has been easy, but now it's getting a little harder that they're home. Yeah. Um, but I really like to start my day with a little meditation and just get myself grounded. But like, really, the biggest thing for me is I have to shower first thing in the morning, because that sets me up like that ensures that I'm getting dressed. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to work in my pajamas. I'm not going <laughs> to like have a long coffee. You know, I'm going to just get up and get to it and um, drink my coffee while I'm working. But just having, I know a lot of people like to like sit down at a notebook and do a little journaling or gratitude practice, um, things like that. But just find things that resonate with you. You can Google morning routine and you'll get a million ideas for things that might resonate with you. But I would say keep it to like five specific things or less and before you start your work day and then and just do those things and and do them consistently for 90 days and that will create mm -hmm. your habit. Great. Right. I love that. Yeah, I was just I did a podcast episode yes or th earlier this week and I was saying the exact same thing of like, you know, self-care is like, you know, just like having that moment of just taking the shower and getting out of your pajamas and like it changes that flick in your brain to yeah. be like even just because like there's days when i'll be like oh, i'll just you know do this now it's fine i'm in my pajamas but when you actually have a shower and you like like what you said have the coffee like at your desk and do the work it's like oh i'm really working this is real and like you're taking better care of yourself so i love that yeah thanks that's something i've had to uh, adjust recently uh tiana is it so it used to be that i would work from home all day i've been doing that for years and i wouldn't shower um, I get to work in my PJs, my comfortable clothes as well. Anyways. Um, but I would, because I would go out every night and do comedy and I was going to be on a stage, I would shower and do hair and makeup before that. So that was yeah. my, like, oh, I got to get ready by then, but there's no more of that. We're, we're not leaving. There's no yeah. more comedy. We can't do any of that. And I've had to shift because it's like, okay, so doing this show is one of the things that's helped me. Like, this is a, a hard appointment I've got. I need to be presentable on camera mm -hmm. for that. Um, but I was talking with a friend yesterday where she says, you know, showering is the first thing she does every morning. I'm like, I normally don't do that because it was the last thing I would do. And I realized, I think I need to change my routine and have that as the first thing I do, which sets the tone because things are so different now. And yeah. I'm not ever going to be, I mean, if I leave the house, it's because I got to go get groceries or something, but it's not like, I don't, you know, you can do that in your, your slippers or whatever. So I'm really reassessing. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it, but it's but it's really having me reassess just m for mental health and and like uh -huh. setting the stage of, you know, if I don't take it in the morning, when is the time I need to take it? Because I don't, I'm not seeing anybody that's gonna smell me. I live by myself. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you, Carol, for sure. Yeah, like, well, I don't want to smell bad when I'm gonna go see these other people, but uh, yeah. I can. I can fake from here up that I've had a shower when I really haven't. So <laughs> that's, that's yeah. true. So I'm reassessing that. It's like, I need that for my mental health and just to set a routine. So I'm now switching to like, 
okay, I'm going to take a shower first thing in the morning, even though it was something I did later, because there's not going to be any, any reason to do it. So making it part of my morning routine is, is yeah, I'm switching up to. So yeah, it's, it's good that you're making that connection, though. And that's a good step. Because for some people, they're probably not making that connection yet. And and, you know, because this is still all really new, this whole being at home all the time and what is the change to the routine. So the earlier that you can make that assessment and adjust your routines to match your new reality, it will make all of this feel more normal and more doable and make you more successful when you come out the other side. And that's the whole resiliency piece, right? Like we don't want people falling into depression and anxiety about all of this. We want that resiliency muscle to be built up and firing strong through all of this. So when things do go back to normal, then we just go back to the way it was and, you know, as close to that as possible and, and just move on. Like, you know, and we've all survived it and we can high five again and, mm -hmm. and we'll all be okay. Yeah. How many of you watching right now can identify with this? Like your routine is changing. You're having to create a new routine. So uh, Tiana likes the amen. So let's, so you know, this is for her, <laughs> her comments right now. So um, I've been really focusing on helping women through this whole homeschooling thing mm -hmm. right now. Like I've been going live every day um, on my business page, Purple Horizons, because we're, I'm calling us the reluctant homeschoolers. <laughs> We didn't want to be in this boat, but here we are. And how yeah. do we get through it? Yeah. John's given an amen. So, John, well, so John, as you're one of our foundational uh, fans here, top fans, uh, you know, what's changed about your routine? So share a little bit with that is in the comments there. Um, so one of the reasons I'm being really mindful of this myself is um, – I, I'm an extrovert and I also know that, you know, not only is like a love language I have touched, but it's also like a, it's a human need that we have to touch other humans. Mm -hmm. um, we have psychology studies from the 20s and 30s that show that touching other humans is an essential for just mental well-being. And I live by myself. I'm a single lady. I got two cats. And I got to tell you, as much as I want to, you know, snuggle my cats, it's not the same as human contact. And so for my own mental well-being, I've been concerned, and that's part of why I'm being very conscientious about, okay, so I've, I've gone a week now without touching another human being, and our, our governor here just mandated that we not go out and not touch anybody for at least two more weeks. So, okay, so three weeks I'm going to go without any human contact. So I'm, I'm going to double down and be very conscientious. Okay, showering first thing in the morning might be the first thing I do to – create this routine and, and make myself, uh, <laughs> make myself mentally well, but you know, so we, we've yeah. got all the things. Go, uh, yeah. So Finding that, those substitutes is going to be really important for a lot of people because yeah. we do need those physical interactions. And, you know, I, I consider myself lucky that I am in a house with three other people as an extrovert that, I, you know, it's okay for me to still hug my kids and kiss my husband. And <laughs> um, so. I'm just afraid that about about a week and a half from now, I'm just going to go in the grocery store and I'm just going to go and like hug a clerk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like you know, they're going to arrest me for assault or something like that. But I was like, no, I mean, it was essential. It was essential touch. <laughs> oh. Anyways. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move on so that Kelly gets a chance. With so, Tiana, thank you so much. Any yeah, of you watching you. right now? Any other questions for Tiana? Please continue to post those in our um, the comments here. Um, but up next, oh my gosh, let me pull up her bio. Um, so Kelly Track is a business coach, podcaster, and online course educator. She helps visionary women build digital biz digital business and one-to-one -one services and online courses. So uh, I know she's got a really great exercise she's going to lead us through, and I can't wait to have her up next. So welcome, Kelly. 
Hello, hello, welcome everybody. Thanks so much for having me here, Carol. So my name is Kelly Track, and I help visionary women build digital businesses. Um, and it's based on their zone of genius. And I help them build up a business with one-on-one -on -one services and online courses um, up to a place of consistent full-time income, which I define as like consistent 5K months and 10K months from your business. Um, but the thing that I kind of stumbled upon kind of accidentally through my work doing this business for the last three years is um, the, the zone of genius work and figuring out what is that gift that you have that makes you so unique and how can you sell that? How can you offer that? How can you create a service around that? So I'm going to be walking you through to today of talking about what exactly is your genius? Why is it important and how to find that genius of yours and whether you build a career around that or a business or a side hustle, you can take in any direction you like. Um, so yeah, it's not just business focused. Don't worry if you have a regular job. <laughs> um, but yes, so we're gonna, I wanna kind of begin by explaining how I even got into the genius work and understanding what this is. Because, you know, back in the day, I always kind of, when people ask me about what my story was, I kind of rewind to high school. Cause I, I feel like, you know, it just showed so much about me. You know, I was like your classic overachiever. I did all the things. I wanted to be great at school and have all these extracurriculars. I worked my butt off. I went to school um, here in British Columbia in, in Canada on scholarship. I graduated on the Dean's List, did every single thing, tried to get all the job offers. Um, after business school was done, I moved down to San Francisco to work on my first tech startup. And I always had wanted to build like the biggest, hardest stuff. And I was always chasing these huge challenges. Um, tech startup one failed. I tried again, tech startup two failed. And I tried a third time and tech startup three failed. So I had to move back home to Canada and I had a rock bottom aha moment. And I asked myself, what if I just did what I was good at? And this was a very life changing question for me because I never just did what I was good at because I thought that was too easy and stupid because I was always busy trying to you know, prove and strive and effort and hustle and achieve. And the irony was that I was trying harder and harder and these businesses were just not working out. So I ended up building a fourth business, which is this one, um, based on the things that came naturally to me. And I turned it into a six figure business. Um, but it was kind of all like ironic because I was like, how am I just doing what's easy to me and natural to me? And it's working when, you know, all my life I've kind of really hustled and worked hard. And that's when I started to sort of peel back the layers and sort of see where my genius was and how I was indirectly harnessing it. And I kind of reverse engineered it to figure out, you know, how to find your genius and what I call the genius framework. So let me know in the chat, type yes, if you agree, if you agree with that story of learning to hustle, grind, be great at all the things, be well-rounded, you know, improve your weaknesses. So the term zone of genius originally comes from a dude named Gay Hendricks who wrote the book, The Big Leap. Um, and he kind of explains that we have these different pockets of life where we're where we're either you know just okay at it, or maybe we're really good at it, and then we have our zone of genius, where we're truly exceptional, and it's where we thrive, and it's the things that we do really innately, really well. So that's like his concept, and that's sort of the working definition that a lot of us know. The way I describe genius is a little bit differently, and what I describe in my genius framework is just a little bit tweaked based on sort of what I've seen for myself and in my clients' lives. So. I want to actually start by talking about the difference between our genius and these things we're really great at versus just a traditional strength, because I think those words get mixed up a lot. So when we do a, a, an assessment like a strengths finder or learning about what our strengths are, let me know in the chat if you've ever done one of those type yes. <laughs> um, usually we get a list of all the things we're great at, but usually we've been, you know, been taught to be well-rounded and we're, we're good at many things. But I, I like to look at like our top, you know, three to five gifts. I call them gifts versus strengths because you know on a list of things that we're good at and the things we have strengths around you know at the bottom of my list like i'm still good at being a you know decisive fast decision maker but i'm not like anywhere close to like you know the speed of somebody like in the army or like somebody who works in a like super high pressure job like you know a, a surgeon making like a life or death choice but at the top you know think about something oh hello from ontario <laughs> um you know, at the top this person's name, because this is when they share in the group, for some reason, um, we can't pull their name through. So I'll go find their name here. So keep, go, keep cool. going. Kelly. Hello, Ontario person. I'm going to get your name here in a moment. <laughs> so at the top, um, the top of your strengths list is like, I would look at the top stuff you're really excellent at and call those your gifts. And I, I like to call it gifts because it's stuff you're really, truly gifted at, like out of everything that you're, you know, really good at to like super excellent at like what are you like truly truly gifted at and I have some questions for you to figure out what you're truly gifted at um but if you take your top three to five gifts and you figure out what those those are and you stick them together and then you figure out um 
and look at what those are. And then look at activities where you do all three to five, where you're harnessing three to five months. I believe that creates your genius. So I know for me through doing the work, um, my, my four things, the best things that I'm truly gifted at is teaching, speaking, creating, and connecting. And when I do things that involve all four, I create a product that is truly exceptional. And it's something that is, it's truly like my best and highest output. So, you know, why is it so important to find your genius and find this area for you? Well, first and foremost, when you do work that's in alignment with it, you feel super fulfilled. Like it's truly work that you love doing. It comes easy to you. You know, it's that it's that quality of work where it feels effortless. And, you know, people are like, wow, this is so great. And you're like, oh, my gosh, it's so easy for me. Mm -hmm. um, another great part about doing this work is that um, when you find it and when you tap into it, you become seen as the thought leader in your space, as the go to expert in your field or in your career. You know, it's if we can even think about it, when we visualize people that we admire at work or, you know, in the entrepreneurship space who are just so good at what they do. Um, and that's because they're tapped into that genius. You can also, you know, be in that space and you, when you're doing it, you can really charge what you're worth, either in an entrepreneurial sense, what you're charging for in your business, for maybe your consulting or your courses or your coaching, or, you know, in a job in a nine to five, you can really ask for the salary you desire because you're so truly gifted at this and you're doing the work that's in your genius. So, that's the value of of finding finding your genius and and honoring it and building a, like a life and a career and a business um, or a side hustle around it. So I have some questions for you guys. We're going to whip through them pretty quickly, but you're going to get the general gist of, of the flavor of questions. So those um, of you watching right now, answer Kelly's questions in the comments. Yes. Yeah. And our goal is to figure out what your, your gifts are. We want to find those best gifts of yours. And then we, I would encourage you in a journal to write those down. And then from there, we look at, okay, what, what activities do you do where you're harnessing all of these at once? And how do they create a really amazing vibe, like a final product? So my first question for you is, what are you good at that nobody taught you how to do? I think this is such an illuminating and eye-opening question because we have those skills that we just like know how to do. Nobody taught us. We didn't maybe take a training or a class, but we're just like good at it. Um, I know for me, I'm very good at just making things and creating stuff. And I never have taken a class in like web design or graphic design or anything, but I can make make anything out of anything. And I'm like, okay, this this is this, you know, this is, this is done. Um, and another great way to look at this is, looking at, you know, what have you been good at for so many years of your life? Like looking back at patterns of consistent hobbies you've had for years, stuff where you really find your flow doing things that you truly enjoy. Like what have you been doing for a long time that maybe you haven't like really taken super seriously, but you've kind of said, oh, this is just a hobby or it's just this like little thing I do on the side. You know, there, there might be um, a gift inside of that because you love doing it and it comes so easily and naturally for you. John, John says uh, the answer to that question is communicating. Okay. Nice. Nice. And you are doing a very good job of communicating tonight, John. So <laughs> genius in action. Another question I have for you is, you know, what things come naturally to you when you see other people struggle, you know, and not from a sense of an egotistical sense of like, oh, I'm better than you, but where you can notice, you know, other people doing, doing something and you think, oh my goodness, they're actually having a really hard time with that. I know for me in business school, we had a class on public speaking. And I remember thinking, oh, this is easy. This is an easy A. You show up and you talk. How hard is it? But some people were like really sweating and having a hard time. And I, that was the first time I realized, oh, maybe I'm better at this than I give myself credit for. So think of scenarios like that in your life. Um, another question is, you know, where do you lose track of time? This is kind of taps into the concept of flow. Um, and when we find our flow is usually also where we find our gifts and our genius. So really think about the stuff you could do forever. I like to ask the more probing question of if you had a spare weekend or a spare Sunday all to yourself, what would you do to fill that time? Um, and there might be some activities you do or things that you do and that underneath have, have a gift or a quality which... Um, will be more pronounced. I know for me growing up, like I loved making jewelry. I loved like making any like little craft or things. And that's because I loved creating stuff just out of nothing. So it doesn't, Another, count if I, doesn't count if I lose track of time watching TikTok, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe there's something in there for you. You know what I mean? Like you're, you always, your gifts, uh, what you kind of enjoy and what you enjoy doing and also the people you respect and admire is also a reflection of your own gifts. So, you know, I love watching TikTok too. And <laughs> One of the things like I've learned through doing a lot of this work is that like um, I feel like I bring a lot of joy to people and I also gravitate towards things that bring me joy. Um, mm. So that's another great question too. like, you know, who are I always like to ask, you know, who are the top five people you admire and why? And if you mm. list out those five reasons why you love them, those are 
very quite frankly, like the gifts inside of you too. Cause it's like what we see in others is really what's in reflection within us. I like um, the entertainment part of it, but I also really admire the people that can dance on there. And I, I can't do that. <laughs> oh, I wish I could do that. I know they're so good. I've been trying to learn some of those dances and I'm like, oh my God, some of these girls are like expert level dancers yeah. here. Yeah. Another great question is, you know, if money wasn't an option, what would you be doing? Um, and I find this is a great question to figure out some of the gifts that you might have and not really recognize as, as gifts. Because if, you know, if money wasn't an option and you could do anything and get paid for it, what would you be sp spending your time doing? Probably the stuff where you find flow, where it's easy for you, what's simple for you and what you enjoy. Um, another interesting question is kind of around it kind of has to do with shadow and our understanding our shadow, which is the dark side of us. We all have a light and a dark side and the shadow side is the side we usually hide from society and um, stuff we try to actively avoid. Um, and it's usually what we also don't like in others. So it's the same concept of what you judge in others is what you judge in yourself. So it's also very interesting when we think of, you know, what's something we really don't like in other people. And then how is the inverse of that our genius? So I'll give you an example. I really don't like fake people. Like I cannot stand people who are fake or pretentious or really want to have like surface level conversations. And indirectly, you know, something that I'm really gifted at is being my authentic self and showing up as who I am and trying as much as I can to just be who I really am. So that's another way sometimes I find your gifts is look at what you don't like in people and look at the inverse and say, oh, maybe I'm just like really good at doing that innately. Um, another question to ask yourself is, what are people already coming to you for? What questions do they ask you? What are your friends calling and asking you about? What kind of advice are you giving? What are people already coming to you for? That can be reflective of the gifts inside of you. Um, and the last question I wanna propose is, you know, what's too easy for you that you talk yourself out of doing? Um, there's a lot of stuff around the genius work that I teach around like unraveling our mindset blocks because quite often we're, we're taught to like, you know, you know, uh, no pain, no gain. You got to work really hard to succeed. And we have this, you know, notion in our head that we have to work super hard and in order to be successful. And if we do things that are too easy, it just like it doesn't count. And I know that's that was the case for me and my previous businesses and all my past, you know, failed attempts in, in tech. Um, I just didn't lean into the things that were easy for me because I thought that was just that that just wasn't how it was done. So ask yourself, you know, where in your life are you talking yourself out of doing something because um, it's just too easy and too simple. So let me know in the comments if there's anything that's coming to mind for you guys or anything that you feel like, oh, you know what, maybe I have a gift in that kind of certain sense, or maybe there's just something that uh, is coming up. Or maybe if, you know, you've been thinking about these questions and you see a theme in your life or you see sort of, sort of parallel themes coming up, I would love to know what kind of gifts are kind of coming to mind. Um, and when you find those top three to five gifts, you know, look at them on paper together and think, what activities do I do that harness all of these at once? Uh, and that's, and that's your genius. That's like your best work. That's your best and highest output. Mm -hmm. So that is the genius framework in a nutshell. And I'd love to answer any questions if you have any. <laughs> yeah. And I, well, and I'm, I'm thinking about this two different perspectives here. So one is my, my keto people that are watching. So uh, my clients that start learning a very easy, simple way of doing keto and their appetite goes down and their weights coming off. Um, they often find themselves. So they're used to decades of just most of their brain space was thinking about their weight. How do I lose this weight? How do I get off this weight? What do I do? What diet am I going to try? And they find themselves after working with me that all of a sudden they've got 90% of the brain power free. And they often then go, Oh my gosh, I need a hobby. I need to figure out what I'm going to do. How do I, how do I, you know, harness all of this? So this is really applicable to all of you out there that are uh, have been working with me on keto and you find yourself like with a bunch of extra brain space, like you get to have something else now in your life, whether it's a career change or a new hobby or volunteering. Um, this is a way of discovering all that. So it's really relevant. I hope you tap into all of what she's saying. It's really important. Um, but also, unfortunately, at this time, we have so many people that are being laid off. Um, you know, your, uh, your job is no longer. Um, and it's, it's, it's sad and it's tragic what's going on. And also the theme of the show is to use this time, um, take some time to reflect on all these questions that Kelly has had and 
use this as an opportunity to figure out what is it that you really, really, really want to be doing with your life and your talents and your, you know, what is it that you're so good at that nobody taught you and what comes so easy for you. And um, so I encourage all, you know, from those two different perspectives, and maybe you're in both camps um, to just take this opportunity to um, see what we'll see what gifts you have out there. So, um, all right. And then Tiana and Derek, it's your turn to ask questions. What questions do you have of Kelly? Um, I love this so much and thank I <laughs> want to talk to you after this. Because... Oh, thank you. I will I want to talk to you after. Look at this Zoom friendships happening <laughs> all the time. Um I it's just so interesting because I have actually kind of shifted my careers a couple of times in the last few years. I um, I stopped doing my doula work after I graduated with my master's and went into branding mm. and was doing like logo and web design and brand strategy workshops. And, um, and I found that it was too lonely for me. And so I went into coaching after that. And like I said, just started working with more than just women in that first year um, of birth and postpartum. And so going through these questions, I'm like, hmm, what, what is my zone of genius? And I've done the um, Roger James Hamilton zone of genius quiz. And no, I don't know what that is. I should Google oh, that. Yes, Google that one too. Um, but, and I was a creator in his zone of genius um, oh, okay. thing. So I'm very interested. To, can you repeat the the person's name that you said? Oh, yes. Um, his concept is different. He's, but he's like the first person that coined that term. Yeah. His name is Gay Hendricks and he wrote the book, The Big Leap, um, okay. which is, he only talks about Zona Genius for like a chapter in there, but most of it's about how you combat your upper limit problem. It's a really interesting book. Um, okay. But yeah, he's, he's the dude that made it. Actually on the topic of quiz, I do have a quiz on how to figure out your genius at kellytrack.com slash genius. <laughs> oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. I try to guess it in eight questions. I try to guess, but uh, <laughs> I do my best <laughs> with the algorithm thingy. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if I, I don't really, I really liked what you are. Sorry. Were you, were you finished with your, your question? Yeah. Sorry. My apologies. Oh okay. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't, it's really interesting because like I do uh, early like how you were talking about like breaking down your genius into like kind of three to five kind of category because I, I do talk to a, a lot of people and try and take that same approach. Um, I talk to them about careers and stuff. Um, ever since I got my degree in advertising and I want to always be a copywriter, but I've always been doing, you know, stand up comedy. And so when I got to Seattle and started actually working after college, you know, I kind of did half and half because uh, I could and then fa found out where like I could make money in the comedy part of what I enjoyed and then also in the advertising part so like it is really interesting that you kind of brought that up because that is a, a really same approach that I I've taken a lot with giving people advice and stuff and yeah so I just appreciated that that was cool thank you I appreciate that and that's it's interesting yeah. that you both both you Tiana and Derek you guys both come from that marketing because I went to I went to business school but I specialized in marketing Carol do you have mm -hmm. any marketing you have sales background we're all kind of yeah. yeah. My degrees are in nutrition and psychology. Okay. Um, but I studied um, sales and marketing. You know, just in the real world for even longer than I've studied both of those other things. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually super weird. Today I was actually supposed to go back. I got accepted to uh, give advice to young professionals at Washington State University through the Communication College, uh, but then the whole thing got canceled, which sucked. But like. Yeah, it was super cool. Like Lester Holt was supposed to accept like the Murrow Award and stuff. Oh. Like, yeah, it was gonna be super cool. But yeah, so that's it was where cool I got my master. Like, it's a kind of awesome. Go Cougs. Yes, <laughs> sure. uh, but yeah, that's yeah, it's interesting. It's cool that this happened today. Uh, those of you uh, watching right now, who's got some comments for Kelly? So, uh, or comments or questions about discovering your own zone of genius? Who's having an aha right now where you maybe you're feeling like Maybe I've been working in the wrong field my whole life. Maybe this is a gift, a time I can use to just re uh, realign myself with my passion, my my uh, my gifts in the world. So, uh, give us your ahas in the comments there. So, 
Thank you, Kelly, so much for that. Uh, I can't wait to go take the quiz as soon as we're done here myself. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Up next, we have a very special guest all the way from Seattle, Washington. Uh, Derek Wolf is, uh, he works as a remote copywriter at Seattle based startup advertising agency. Do we need to mention them? I don't know. Uh, do you want to plug them? <laughs> it's a well plus way. That's what we're well called. Yeah. Way. Uh, he drafts and publishes creative social media messaging for local tech companies that have international reach on top of copywriting. Derek is also a stand up comedian who regularly performs with famous radio personalities and national comedians. Derek finds that comedy has allowed him to creatively express himself off stage as well and attributes his creative copywriting ideas to his comedic cynicism. Uh, I'm going to let you plug your own uh, <laughs> later and we'll put it in the show notes as well too. Do it later, uh, yeah, it's fine. So I know Derek through stand-up comedy in the Seattle area and we up until recently, until everything shut down, we we're comedy co-producers in the Seattle area. Uh, we had the hottest room in Seattle, all the comedians <laughs> space on our stage now that stage is in my garage downstairs <laughs> so, thank you Derek, glad you got there. it out of the car yeah yeah oh yeah <laughs> no problem i should have videoed it i mean I, maybe i'll yeah. put it back in and show it up all right yeah. Derek, thank you for being here um hey share with us what what are you what what do you got for us about how to use this time for self-improvement yeah, I mean, uh, I wrote a couple like kind of writer tricks and stuff like that. I've been I usually work uh, from home uh, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and so luckily uh, all our our clients are all digital sales and stuff like that with do uh, website domains and stuff. So I'm still continuing to do that. Uh, but um, so it's a uh, so I just want to kind of give some tips that I've learned that have really helped, and then uh, other things that I'm doing right now with uh, kind of some more freed up time with not having to stand up and um, just doing that three days a week. Um, so, I mean, the best thing I think, like the thing I've been trying to do for myself is really improve the skills that I have. Like, I mean, in marketing and advertising, especially in the creative space, everything's always evolving. You got to keep up. You always got to be ahead of the game and stuff. And so um, I'm actually doing like a, an Instagram, um, like kind of course that teaches you how to, you know, really go into the uh, basics of that stuff. Actually, uh, what is it? Instagram, Insta go. Is that what it is, Carol? <laughs> Instago, <laughs> Instago, yeah. Oh, uh, ready, ready, set, Graham is what the training. Ready, is. ready, set, Graham. Yes, that's what I, I made it for the first lesson. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, you know, that's that's a really. Fun so, I, I just know that when you're going through it, Subi Zimmerman. If anyone has any time, yeah. Subi says that's what. <laughs> but uh, no, she and it's great because like you know I've always loved Instagram and I've always like uh, you know the past few years I've really been trying to build an audience on there and I've been kind of successful with that. But now it's cool that I have the time now um, to really invest in something that doesn't really I get any return on yet. But it's nice to like invest that time into learning more about it so I can't eventually get to that point. Um, to do that. So, I mean, just anything that, you know, helps you kind of be better into what you want to do in your free time um, is uh, something I think I would recommend when you're working from home and, and have that, that free time to do it for yourself. Um, and then that would go to the, the next part would be, you know, setting goals for yourself. I do that all the time. And, um, you know, if you're, you know, working from home or taking a course, it's always important to kind of set end of the end of the day goals to make sure that you do get to those points that where you want to be. And then you also feel pride yourself and be productive. Um, and like, that's the thing where, you know, it's easy to get distracted and procrastinate when you're home, when you have TV sitting in your room and all that stuff, you know, it's super easy to just not do it and push it off. Uh, but like, you know, really separating yourself and setting a like kind of area for yourself that is just, you only associate with work. I think is the best thing. So then you can reach those goals. And then you immediately, when you walk into that room, you're kind of primed to go. Sometimes if I'm too distracted, I'll go to like, not right now, but I'll go to the Starbucks, you know, like, and then it'll be like, I'm not leaving for two hours. So I'm doing two hours of work, plug it in, get away from everybody. And then at least you'll have, you know, you'll, you'll make some progress, whether it's good or bad, you'll have something. And so that's always something that's always helped me, um, especially when, you know, your, your time management is kind of less, uh, strict. So that's something that's always helped me for sure. I think that's a really great tip, right? Cause we've got mm -hmm. your most people are working from home or they're trying to work from yeah. home or not. Like even if you're laid off, like what do you do with the whole day? So setting a schedule for yourself and following that. Exactly. Is yeah. And then it's also very important to you to reward yourself after that. I mean, that's what I do. I'll like be like, Hey, like 
you get you you do you know you write for for an hour and then uh you can play video games later like that's what you get so that's <laughs> you know so that's TikTok a, timer for 15 minutes to watch TikTok. exactly exactly you gotta take time for yourself you gotta reward yourself <laughs> Um, and then, uh, kind of the last thing, yeah, last thing I want to talk about, I think we, we've, we all talked about this kind of about just connecting with people and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, you know, Carol, you were talking a lot about how you go out, you wouldn't shower till you go out to comedy and stuff like that. And I was in the same boat, um, <laughs> you know, but, and, and, but what I would do was kind of force myself, I'd get on shows like later in the week. So then like on a Wednesday, if I worked from home, um, I'd be inside all day and then I'd be like, okay, I'm comedy eight. I got a shower and like, you know, it's like, or I could just lay in bed all day, but it's like, no, I, I, I commend to myself to this. There's people that, you know, I want to see. And I've always, I've never regretted not going to those things. So just oh, having some, you, you never regretted not showering. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> regretted well, showering. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, kind of forcing myself to, to interact with people, it would always make me a lot happier than not doing it. So I think like, you know, I think that's a very important thing for people to do, especially in this time, you know, do that, but change to the kind of digital area, you know, like do a book club or something where like, you know, you meet with your friends once a week and stuff like that. And you, you're kind of held to some sort of goal you have to reach or, um, you know, like if like, like me, yeah, I play video games with my buddies. So it's like, you know, at night it's like, Hey, we're all kind of having some sort of social interaction in that aspect, even though we can't leave the house, we're doing something um together so yeah i think this might be a fun confession for those of you guys uh watching right now how long has it been since you've showered tell us in the comments here (laughs) confession time (laughs) oh it's a we'll get a humorous take here um oh yeah that's that's great tips all right derek how long has it been since you've showered (laughs) Uh, I showered two hours ago. Oh, <laughs> hey. yeah. Yay. Almost been out two days. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thanks for, well, well, I'll take it personally. Thanks for showering. <laughs> of course. Funny, yeah. we, had, we had like seven people watching as soon as I said, how long has it been since you showered? We dropped to three. So uh, <laughs> They're probably jumping in the shower now. We're going to have people watching the replay too. So go ahead and, you know, join in. This is, this is lots of fun here. So, um, I'm going to, I'm going to pop in a question here that, that uh, John asked that's going to be related to Kelly. And then I'm going to have Kelly and Tiana ask some questions of Derek. So, um, so what do you say about this, Kelly? So what if you do your questions and you notice that, oh my gosh, I've got a couple of zones, zones of genius that (laughs) like laying on the beach. He said, I'm uh, I'm laying on the beach. Uh, what do you say if you find that like some of your zones of genius probably aren't going to pay very well? Yeah. So this is a lot of what I talk about as well, you know, especially when it comes to gifts that we have stories around in our, in our heads. So especially things that are more creative or artistic, sometimes get that, you know, that mindset. Sometimes we have the patterns of that sort of starving artist mindset and mentality. This comes back to the money mindset work and um, doing doing the, the money mindset work. So I really believe you can make money doing the things you love to do and the things that you are truly good at. And, you know, it comes first and foremost, my favorite book of all is Jen Sincero's You're a Badass Making Money. It's so, it's so true because, you know, even if we feel like we can't make money doing our creative gifts in the world, there's other people that have gone on to do it. You know, like Jim Carrey, you know, is an amazing comedian. You know, he's also from Canada. Um, but, you know, people that have gone on to do what you want to do, authors that you really respect and admire. A lot of people are like, oh, writing doesn't pay the bills. Well, Jen Sincero is making a lot of millions off her book. So it's about finding those people who are already doing it and proving that you can do it too. And it's about strengthening your your money mindset and um in other words it's called like kind of like wealth consciousness it's kind of whatever word you like to use but changing those stories you have around money and getting rid of the patterning that says you can't make money doing that you have to have a more you know stable career or do something that makes money so it's more about letting go of those stories um mm-hmm. and changing that through changing your beliefs but also finding other people who've already done it and um, and it's one of those things I always believe that like, if you really, really want it bad enough, you'll figure out how to, how to make it work and how to make money off of it. And, um, it is totally available to you with just changing the beliefs and noticing that if other people can do it, you can do it too. So that's a great question. And it's something that a lot of people get, you know, hung up on and rightfully so it's a lot of the society narratives of 
what we can and cannot make money doing. Um, but I encourage you to, to challenge your beliefs and perceptions a little bit and see if there's maybe even a little bit of room to to try to get paid doing what you love to do. Uh, I mean, can I chime in on something real quick with that? Kardashians get paid for laying on the beach. So come on, John. You can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> I get paid to write tweets. So, <laughs> um, I think that there is a huge uh, pressure also right now to monetize every single thing that we do. And we need to also let go of some of that. Like, if you have a hobby that you love that gives you a lot of pleasure in just doing that thing, you don't have to monetize it. And it, like monetizing it can actually reduce your pleasure and it it decreases that renewal piece. So if it's, you know, like there's a lot of pressure to do the side hustle and, and it's okay. If you're in a place where you don't need it financially, just enjoy it for the sake of enjoying it. That's my advice. I agree. That's great. That's a great point. Yeah, I agree too. I agree too. Um, I think this is a comment for the question about how long it's been since you've showered. Uh, Mike was a guest on our Saturday show and he's been watching diligently as well. So thank you for chiming in, Mike. Thank you for showering. Uh, I don't know how long it had been before then, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter. Uh, uh, Kelly, Kelly and, um, Oh, Oh, cool. John just scheduled his, uh, I think John, yeah, anyways. Uh, what questions do Kelly and Tiana have for Derek? Yeah, I have a question for you, Derek. I was actually curious about, you were talking about building your Instagram following. Is that, you said that was for your, that's for your comedy and your copywriting work. I'm just curious as to how you've been getting your name out there, how you've been, you know, ex ex extending your reach. Yeah, I mean, for Instagram, it's mostly been, um, just for the comedy aspect of it. Um, I kind of started a new profile about two years ago and just kind of like, you know, I'm kind of really been interested, interested in imagery and stuff. And so I kind of just really decided to try it. And just like um, after I graduated and really um, just been posting, um, you know, a bunch of pictures from like comedy shows. Um, I also used to work at a radio station. So I go to concerts all the time. So I got, you know, content through that. Um, but then also doing, uh, doing like blogging and stuff. So I kind of do like a, like a, <laughs> a mock Gary Vaynerchuk kind of thing, but, with, cool. but and, uh, yeah. And so it's like, you know, it's like inspirational, but dumb. So that's kind of the, <laughs> the whole, I love that. Whole, like, yeah. And I did one on act, like kind of just one off the fly. I was like, Hey, I'm just going to try this. And then people really reacted to it. And then I was kind of like, okay, I'm just going to keep kind of doing it and kind of branded myself onto that and um so yeah that's how i've kind of been getting the following and through word of mouth and uh following other comedians and stuff so yeah cool i love yeah. stand-up comedy like i i want to try it someday i think it is ah. so yeah I, well, I everyone's doing it in their living like, rooms right now so. i have a friend who uh <laughs> said that she remind that i remind her of uh seinfeld so i was like oh ah. Oh, there you go. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. When, uh, you know, in six or 12 or 18 months or whenever the world get, gets back to normal, Tana, we'll have you out for one of our open mics when we open things back up again. And there we go. Just in time. I have enough time yeah. to, like, write something. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. know what? I, I'm going to, Derek, I'm going to go out on a limb right now, and I'm going to promise her a guest spot on one of her shows oh. back when we You got that. it. Yep. But you, well, oh you got to open mic first, but yes. So there you go. You got an open invitation. <gasps> Genius. We're going to, oh. we're going to save a spot for you. We're, that's how. Kelly, we got we one for you too, Kelly. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a little road trip down there. For you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. Other comments or questions? Uh, how about those of you watching? Uh, who's got comments, questions for Derek? Uh, Tiana or Kelly, last time here. We're going to wrap this up, you guys. Um, John says he stutters. No stand-up for this kid. Actually, um, who is the, the the comedian in the Seattle area that um, has a stutter? And he is amazing. He's so funny. Derek, do you remember that guy? Have you seen him? I've seen I haven't him. seen him for a while. Hi, Ty. He came to our uh, open mic before, too, but maybe one, one of the nights that you were off. 
Um, Jer is it Jeremy something? Uh, is it, I want to say Jeremy McDonald. Is that him? Uh, yeah. That sounds, yeah, yeah, I mean, you know yeah. What? yeah. Is no yeah. excuse for not doing stand up. He is amazing. He's so hilarious. Yeah. So, John, you got to. You never know when he brings yeah. it up. Yeah. yeah. So, which is great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, all right. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. We've been streaming for virtually an hour now. You guys are, this has been so great. Thanks for hanging out with me. Those of you that are watching, thank you so much. Um, we're going to transition over and actually be broadcasting just from my Facebook page. So tonight we're in the group and also on my business page. And we're going to actually, from going forward, we're going to be streaming live on my business page. That way people don't have to join the group to be able to have access to this. So those of you that are watching, please share this with anyone that you know right now could use um, some positivity, some redirect, some uh, hopeful and optimism in this time. Anyone especially who's following or wants to follow a ketogenic diet for uh, optimal health and well-being, please share this. That's how you give us the compliment. Um, also, so every single night, 7 p.m. Pacific, I, we're going live. I've got guests booked out for the next week already, too. So uh, I'm uh, excited to share all of that, too. So the way that we're going to wrap this up as I'm going to have each of you. So this is what I call the lightning bolt round. This is what I do in my coaching, how I close out my coaching calls, but it's how we've been doing, um, how we've been doing this here as well on these live shows. And uh, if we got some other comment here about, um, take the quiz. Anyway, sorry. Got a little just, so we've got a comment about, we'll look up the website. Oh, John's asking, do you need a dad joke? Okay, come on, John. Share the dad joke with us. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Yeah, let's hear it, John. Let's hear the dad joke. Uh, we all need some jokes at this time. Um, and somebody else is saying, couldn't answer all the questions so quickly. So, well, the nice thing is, is this, this recording is going to be up there. You'll be able to rewatch again. Um, also, I'm going to invite each of our guests to share their contact info with you here very shortly. So um, if you're watching and you missed all of Kelly's questions, um, then I encourage you to follow up. And also, if you comment here, Kelly's going to go back through and she'll find you. She'll find you. She'll <laughs> find you. She'll find you and she'll share all the questions uh, with you privately too. So yeah, if you want those questions again, make a comment as well and uh, we'll, we'll have Kelly follow up with you. Also, if you want the PRISM uh, framework as well, uh, make a comment too, and we'll have Tiana yeah. follow up with you too. And if you want the work from home Instagram strategies, uh, for Derek as well. So, okay, so, um, lightning bolt round. This is where each of you share your aha, your takeaway from this, and also feel free in your closing to share how people can contact you. If you, uh, have some kind of a freebie or like the quiz, Kelly, again, if you want to mention that or anything else that you'd like to share with people if they to connect with you, do that as well. Uh, is that too many things for you to remember what to say? <laughs> Hopefully not. <Okay. clears throat> um, so do you want to go the same order? What it's what, with? Totally uh, random, whoever wants to go first, yeah. All right, well, I'm already talking, so I guess I'll go. <laughs> It's uh, you. <laughs> So I guess my big takeaway was um, the the genius questions, and I really want to follow up with Kelly about all of that. Um, and my contact information, I am Tiana Kelly. My company is Purple Horizons. My website is purplehorizons.com. Very easy. And what I want to share with you is that I have my next Heart Prisms class, which is it's called From Surviving to Thriving. It's on my website. And I just got that all up and scheduled for April. It's a four part class and it's just 30 minutes each day. And we'll go through three Heart Prisms every day. And um, it's just 50 bucks for all four days. Um, and there's no homework. We do it all in class. So mm. <laughs> that's, I think that's a big, a big plus for a lot of people is that the value is all self-contained in the class. You don't have to do a lot of homework. So I have really loved uh, being here and thanks for inviting me today. Oh, thank you so much, Tiana. Thank you. And we've got somebody that's saying they want the prism. So I'll let you go back yeah. and follow up with people too. Okay, great. Thanks for being here. Thank you. 
I'll go next. I think my biggest aha moments, number one, that instead of calling it self-care, call it renewal. I love that. Um, And then I also, I just loved connecting the four of us in this chat um, and seeing guys on video. I feel like this is, I just, just feels so fun. And it definitely is like the highlight of my day. And as an extrovert, I feel like I really needed this. So just that, just that reminder to like connect and meet people and just get creative with, with, how we can stay connected during this time, I think is just so important. Um, you can find me at kellytrack.com. My last name is spelled T-R-A-C-H, even though I pronounce it like track and field. Um, you can take the quiz to figure out what's your zone of genius at kellytrack.com slash genius. And you get sent a five page free report on uh, how to find your gene or what your zone of genius is based on the quiz. And my suggestions for you, if you want to build a business, what you could sell, how you could market it based on your genius type. Um, and then, yeah, you can you can find me on Instagram at Kelly Track. It, everything is at just Kelly Track, <laughs> just my name. So, yeah, and then you can – I've got courses, coaching, the, the whole the whole nine yards, um, but you can all find that on kellytrack.com. And thanks so much for having me, Carol. It was such a pleasure and an honor to be here, and it was nice to meet you, Derek and Tiana. This was really fun. This is great, and it's good because on the screen, your name is spelled the way that it's correctly spelled. So all of you watching can see that <laughs> how to connect with her. So thank you for being here. It's been great. Yeah. No, it's been super fun. Uh, I feel like I'm on like a like a CNN panel right now. <laughs> like whenever my dad's watching news, I'm like, yep, that's this is what this looks like. Uh, yeah, my big takeaways from today, uh, what I really learned, I mean, I loved just the focus on just like what you're, what you're good at and passionate about and like finding your purpose and, and really pursuing that. And then also, you know, like, like really doing that, but also like doing that for you and like not, you know, just trying to make money off it and make it into something that, you know, you won't enjoy, which I think is the most important part of your passion. So um, yeah, that was my biggest takeaways. Uh, you can find me, if you want to see my, my comedy promotions and stuff like that. I'm on Instagram uh, at wolf.t.derek. And then I have a Derek Wolf comedy uh, Facebook page. And if you want any comedy or copywriting, sorry, uh, copywriting services, uh, my website is uh, www.derekwolfisitfunny.com. And so you can find it. Isn't? <laughs> is it funny? Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so um, thanks so much for having me, Carol. It was great meeting you guys. And yeah, I would love to. Yeah, it would be great connecting with you guys. Wonderful. Uh, Kelly, it looks like you've got one Insta- no, one new Instagram follower. Thank already. You. Hello, John. Thank first. you for following. <laughs> oh. oh, my gosh. Okay. Thank you, all of our viewers live and seeing the replay. Thank you so much for watching this. Give yourselves a big thumbs up. Um, thank you again. We're going to be live here every single evening, 7 Pacific time. If you miss it, the replay is going to be up there as well, too. So, Um, Thank you to all of our guests, and we've got a lot of great shows coming up. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for being here. That's all for now. Bye. Bye, Bye, John. Bye. (laughs) John's our super fan.